the Charleston Chew. Chewy, chocolatey, 99 cents at your local Walmart's a true American staple. The Charleston Chew Mini, about 1 32nd the size of its predecessor, just as tasty, not quite as satisfying though. What do we have here? A train wreck waiting to happen, that's what we have here. What's going on peeps? Welcome back to this week's Bad Idea. Now after countless hours of scouring the internet left and right, trying to find a candy that someone hasn't giant-ified yet. You have Timmy Tomato, the king of all things giant. I mean, there was very little things that have not been done yet. But finally, I finally found out, at least to my knowledge, that no one had ever tried to make a giant Charleston chew, mainly because they're not that popular, but I really like them. Now this is probably Probably gonna take me a couple days and a big hit out of my wallet, but let's just jump into it. Now before anything else, you have to prepare the mold for your candy to get a sense of how big and how much supplies you're gonna need and stuff like that. So I discovered this disgusting old dusty box from my basement. Sorry dad for stealing it from you. This thing is probably twice my age, but we're gonna roll with it. To make it easier to work with, I cut off the top flap of that. But now, what we basically have to find is an object to fit inside of it so it can hold the cavity for the filling of the Charleston Chew. It'll make sense when you see what I'm doing. But all I can really find that would work is this much smaller box. The only problem is it's a lot shorter. So what I ended up having to do was basically taking a piece of cardboard and blocking off about five inches of the end of the bigger piece. I secured that on the top and the sides with some duct tape and I also wrapped the entire thing with duct tape. I'm hoping this will give it a little more structural integrity because I'm sure once we load this up with 10 pounds of chocolate, it's gonna wanna bow out a little bit. And once that all looks set, I began to wrap the entire inside with some parchment paper. I wrestled with this paper for about 20 minutes until I was able to tape it all around the sides. I also used some paper clips to secure it because unbeknownst to me, not only does food not stick to parchment paper, duct tape doesn't stick either. It's a good quality product, I guess. Once the entire inside of that was lined with the paper, I put that aside and then grabbed my smaller box, wiped it down really quick with a wet rag, and then wrapped that really, really tightly in aluminum foil. Now this might seem unnecessary to you, but trust me, you're gonna wanna do it. I actually went back and taped every single seam where the tin foil either started or ended because if you don't, the chocolate's gonna wanna seep underneath there and then the tin foil's gonna get stuck in your chocolate. It's just gonna save you a headache, so go back and do it. And now that our two molds are looking pretty good, we can actually start on the food portion of this. God help us. Now, was 10 bags or 12 pounds of chocolate chips necessary for this project? We will find out. Either way, they're already purchased, so we might as well make use of what we need. I tried to make the biggest double boiler that I could possibly make with a big saucepan and then a smaller one on the side, resisting every urge in my body to start remembering the last experience I had with a double boiler and chocolate. I still have nightmares about that video, not gonna lie. After a few minutes of mixing the chocolate chips and getting them really melted down and silky smooth, I took them off of the heat, added in a few more cups of the chips, and then used the heat from the melted chocolate and the pan to melt the rest. Again, the last time I did this, it seems like all the work was for nothing, so I'm trying to stay positive today, you know? Maybe second time, actually uh, 18th time is the charm. <laughs> But once all of the chocolate has finally melted down, you can begin to pour it all in the bottom of your box. Now, I really don't have exact dimensions on this box, but I do know that I used about five pounds of chocolate for this first step, so uh, take it as you will. But I threw in the secondary box inside the middle and tried to press it down in the chocolate so it kind of seeped up the sides. My goal was to leave about a half inch of chocolate all around the side so hopefully it'll be strong enough to support itself and not crack so easy when I pick it up later, but in order to keep that box firmly down into the chocolate, I had to throw some more tape on it. Then I just threw that into the fridge for the night and waited for day two. 
When day two finally came around, I was really excited about this. You know, it looked like all the chocolate had set properly. I started to take out the middle of the box, which I'd be putting it very lightly if I said that this middle box wrestled me till the very end. I ended up having to chop it off and take it out piece by piece, which I was hoping to not have to do, but either way, it came out just as good as I was hoping. There's no visible cracks yet. Everything's looking pretty uniform. I'm happy with how it's going. Now for the time being, I set that aside and began to work on my marshmallow filling. For the filling that I'm gonna make for this thing, I grabbed some cornstarch and vanilla extract, some sea salt and honey, a couple tablespoons of water and two eggs. I'm basically attempting to recreate the middle of the Charleston Chew, which is like a really hard marshmallow nougat. And I went through a bunch of recipes online and found one that I thought might come pretty close to duplicating it. Now I started over on my stove top. I grabbed two cups of honey and then two tablespoons of water and over medium to high heat, mixed those into each other for about 10 minutes until the mixture started boiling and foaming across the top like this. I then threw that aside really quick and in a bowl I got two egg whites and whisked those until I got some firm peaks. At which point I added in some of the sea salt and cornstarch. I'll leave this recipe in the description if you really want to see the exact measurements. Mix that for another minute and then really slowly drizzled in my hot honey mixture. Now I spent about four minutes drizzling this in because the recipe says to add it as slowly as possible and of course I don't have a stand mixer, but I did the best I could. Once that mixture is completely incorporated, you wanna mix it on medium speed for about 10 more minutes, then add a teaspoon of the vanilla extract and finish that all off with another five minutes of beating. You want this to be feeling really, really sticky as you mix it and to puff up to almost double its size. That's pretty much when you know it's just about done. I carefully poured that into the center of my chocolate box and realized that this was not going to be nearly enough. Now with the help of my mom who I summoned to make a second batch after she just got out of work, shout out to you, you the real MVP. I quickly whipped up yet another batch and added it on top of the first one. I tried to flatten it out and then threw it back into the fridge for about seven more hours. Later that night, I took it back out, and guess what? We have to go back to the stove to melt down some more chocolate. At this point, you should just be calling me Willy Wonka, to be honest. While the chocolate was melting down, I tried to reinforce the box with some duct tape across the top, because I realized the sides were kind of sticking out, and I didn't want the chocolate to seep down in there and make it uneven looking. So I did that, and then once the chocolate was all melted, I tried to pour it over the top. The duct tape was a bad idea. I guess the really hot melted chocolate kind of heated up the marshmallow filling and then wherever I hadn't initially poured the chocolate, the marshmallow kind of poked up. And I didn't even melt enough chocolate to fill up the rest of the box. So this is taking a sudden but drastic nosedive. I very quickly grabbed some weights and secured the sides while I cut off the duct tape really quickly melted down the rest of the chocolate that I bought, so yes, I used all 12 pounds, and then poured it over the top where all the marshmallow was sticking up. Really quickly tried to even out all the chocolate and throw that back into the fridge for another couple hours. And this whole process has returned you back to here. It is now day three, so I guess we can see where we're at. Now clearly, the duct tape was not the best idea almost in the exact pattern that the duct tape was and I initially missed the marshmallow with the chocolate, it's all puffed up. Great. We're gonna move on though and uh, see what we can do here, if anything. Try to carefully go around the outsides. Now don't forget guys, this is like three days worth of work. I feel like this is my child. Actually, probably that one child that the parents don't like, but they kind of have to pretend that they like. Oops. Oh boy. Yeah! Oh my god. This right here is what dreams are made of, kids. Now, if I really wanted to or had the patience, I could probably go through and try to melt down some of the imperfections along here, but I really have neither one of those at this point. Here's a, a comparison shot, ready? This is the size of the normal one. 
It's half eaten because I've been eating it during this video. Now here's the middle. Here's what the middle looks like of your typical candy. God help me and my fingers while I'm trying to cut this thing. I feel like I'm slaying a dragon or a 25 pound candy bar. Ooh, yo. This looks really freaking good, guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's a piece of tape on it. Honestly, like, look how accurate this is. This is the original one. I'd say that's friggin' spot on, honestly. Okay, enough chatting, it is time to try. I'm so friggin' excited for this man, like, I put more hours of work into a candy bar than Prank Invasion does into his fake videos that get 10 million views. But anyways. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, my oh! That's something on me, like a little anywhere. Holy crap, guys! It is delicious. It kind of has uh, an overwhelming honey taste because there's so much friggin' honey in the middle. But I don't care. It's over. It's tasty. It's sugary. This video is done, and I cannot be happier about that last one. Can we get like a quick comparison? Ooh, ooh, thumbnail shot. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's DIY. If you did, leave a like on this for me, please. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are new around here. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you don't already. I'm getting out of breath holding this thing. And I hope you guys have an absolutely awesome rest of your week. I'll see you right back here for the next video. Hopefully it won't be anything like this.